Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. Now, I've got some cleanup to do before we dig further into the video. I have not played this game in six months, something like that. It's been a long time. A lot has changed in my life since I last booted this game up. Um, I don't know why, I was enjoying it perfectly at the time, and then I kind of went through some stuff and I got into a different style of game and all this kind of stuff, and Disco Elysium just kind of fell by the wayside. I was considering just dropping the playthrough altogether and never uploading it, because um, you folks haven't seen episode 1 as I record episode 7 right now, so, or episode 8 or whatever it is. So I could have just scrapped the whole thing and nobody would have been any the wiser, really. But um, I remember enjoying it, and I think if I can reconfigure myself, rework out what was going on, and where we were, I did have a little look at my last episode to try and like recalculate. These are completely the wrong words. Configure and calculate were both <laughs> incorrect there. But um, the point is, I hope we can we can get back into it, and uh, this will be the next thing I upload after God of War Ragnarok. Um, a lot has changed in my life since I started, <laughs> last recorded this. I have been through. I've started and ended a relationship since then. I'm in a different room now. I've got. But a lot has changed in my life since then. And uh, I wonder if that's going to give me a different take on some of the political things. Now, before we carry on, I do want to have a look on this. So this is our task thing. I checked, and I know one thing I wanted to do was go buy a map. But we're not going to do that yet. Call us back in a day. To get to the coast, you need to use a panel. It's been blocked, depending. This will open up a new area. So it's done by Wednesday morning. What day is it? This is Monday evening at the moment. So tomorrow, we can call Alice back and run the number on the victim's armour boots. He had those really weird ceramic armour boots that didn't fit at all. And on Wednesday, we can head to a new area. I also had a look in that. I think what we're doing here now is we're going to go knock on a couple different doors. And I'm waiting for, I think, 9 o'clock. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. I can't remember what happened the last time we knocked on this, but I, I just, I, I checked the last video and I know that I said that, oh yeah, yeah, so the apartment's meant to be empty and someone's in there. I know I said I was going to check out number 10 and number 28. Excuse me? Of course not. <laughs> Scare them. Suspected of some big crime. You have plenty of reason to enter. I don't need a warrant if I suspect there's been a break-in. Good point. Open the door so I can verify your identity. Are you cooking morphine in there? <laughs> um, I don't need a warrant. Oh, come on. There we go. There's a pause before you hear the door being unlocked. Well, that was easy. Well done, rhetoric. That was smart. Thank you. Kitsaragi, I want you to be impressed with me. Also, another thing I wanted to talk about very briefly, um, since I last played this game, the developer of this game, Zaum, Z-A-U-M, which is like a collective thing, um, their publisher has fucked them over royally to the point where the people, the lead people responsible for this game, are not involved with the sequel. So we will not be playing the sequel. Just to put that out there now. Okay, door open. Let's uh, have a little look. Hello, I'm gonna inspect your apartment before I do anything. This is clearly not your apartment. You're a well-suited woman in a decrepit hovel. Don't be ridiculous, you can hear it swarming with bugs. A blister pack of medicine peeks out of the box. You should take it, I should take it. There we go. Um, can I heal? Oh, ooh. Lovely stuff. I remember I also mentioned that I wanted to go buy some morale healing items. No longer necessary. Lovely stuff. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? She jingles a set of keys in her hand. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? She fumbles through her purse, fishing out a light paper-clad passport. I'm going to inspect the passport. Sometimes people will be overly eager with their evidence or whatever it is, their proof, in the hopes that they'll kind of disarm you into not checking. I'm going to inspect it. It feels flimsy in hand, with the words Revachol Zone of Control, written under a nondescript municipal logo. 
There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. Nice haircut. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. Okay, maybe she likes me more. I told her she had a nice haircut. Me with my shopping bag full of cans and my stupid hat. What are you doing here? I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. <laughs> I fucked shit up too. Reprehensible. Who lived here? It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. You'd think they'd make rent. She stops hesitating. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted or is that it? I'm in a hurry. Who lived in the foreclosed apartment down the hallway? So I'm assuming that's number 28. Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but... And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. So preppy. She's probably on some low-grade performance enhancers, like Preptide or Pericanine. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. I can't really click my fingers. <laughs> the sum must have been puny. Um, My money has also disappeared, I think. No, it couldn't have been that much money. These apartments look pretty shabby. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. That seems unlikely. So wait, what happened with the wall? Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. She's still shaking her head, manicured hands now crossed over the chest. Of course. She replies with a smile, but her eyes remain glazed over. She's been waiting for you to leave. Thank you for the information, Medea. I will go investigate apartment number... Wait, that was apartment time. Report back to cleaning lady. Cleaning lady? Hello, I bring you information. Information? Give me a moment. Ah, lesser. I didn't find any counterculture people in apartment 10. It was just a real estate agent setting up the room for new tenants. Speaking of which, I believe the person in the room next to that was like... Running some communist manifesto, right? I see. We did I it. hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. We completed a task. <laughs> it's one of the things I saw when I went back and checked the last video. Me saying I really need to clear this task board a little bit. Uh, right. Yes, radio computer wizards are coming. They're going to save the place in the economy. No one's coming. There'll be nothing but squalor unless we start <laughs> killing real estate agents. Lacks women and sexual deviance. That's all come. These are both awful. I'm sure everything will be fine. This apartment building needs slow change. Imperceptibly slow. I think, I don't know, she's an old cleaning lady. Is she going to be scared by radio computer wizards? I'm going to go for the, everything will be fine. Yes. Well, <clears throat> I hope they're good people. They will be. Your statements are too vague to comment on. Oh. Okay. That's a fair point. I did try to just offer like a lazy platitude. Game kind of called me out on it. Uh, right, I do not remember which is the one I'm looking for. Number 28 is all I know. I believe I'm hoping that this person comes home. That one's green. Let's go over there. That's a balcony. Oh. The shoes come in three different... Okay. Apartment 12. A loud rumbling snore comes from within. Snoring is scary somehow. <laughs> you should leave. <coughs> oh, I'm still sick. Sorry. Don't think I ever came over it. These shower curtains are covered in some sort of slime. Moss crawls on these bathroom tiles. Actual moss. 
Uh, I know we met the smoking guy around here, that, right? That's why we came to the building in the first place. And we also met that lass who kept calling me a piggy wiggy. Let me just check my chip. <laughs> okay, well, we got another done one. That's cool. We got 10 XP as well. I don't think I leveled. What are we working on? Rigorous self critique. So I've lost authority. This stuff is going to be very scary to me for a little while until I get a handle on it again. Uh, 6 out of 100 for our thingamajiggy. Get some clothes ready to go. Um, right. The victim tattoos. I think I, might, I wanted to ask the guy in the apartment about that. You gotta talk to Kuno. Just gonna keep clicking buttons until I find something to do. Okay, that's what I'm working on now. Wait, no, it's not. Locate the door 28 in the apartment building for the smoker on the balcony. Yeah, okay. So we saw him, we talked to him from below, but we don't know, we didn't get to his actual apartment. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. There we go. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. I mean, it's 8.40. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Sounds good. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. Remember, tomorrow. He's probably gone for today. Okay, so maybe I can come back tomorrow and do both of the ones that I was talking about. Uh, apartment 28 and the other one as well. Oh, there's a way over there. Interesting. Okay, I think that's us done in here then. I mean, I've got 18 minutes to kill if I want to come back and do the other one. It makes sense to go do both at the same time, right? So, we'll come back here tomorrow. Let's head out for now. We can go talk to Kuno. We can talk to Gart. I want to go to the shop. The shop might close. There's my coat. I'm going to get you back eventually, bucko. Uh, also need to figure out how I escaped from here and how I got here in the first place. Because I don't know the answer to that question, if I'm honest. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. It is not an easy game to just, like, come back to when you've not played it in ages, it must be said. But uh, it's just going to be a little bit of time and we'll, we'll be back on no problems. Did I talk to people down here? Okay, he's not talking. It's fine. I, th I think I did. I think I did. Okay. I remember being a communist <laughs> and like an excessively good person. That's the bookshop with the little kid. It was adorable. Who are you? We talked. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. I don't think we talk to these people. Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? The other one is eating a big sandwich. Look in his hand, going into his mouth. The sandwich, it's hauntingly beautiful. <laughs> I would like to have the sandwich. I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. You know what, physical instrument? You got this one. I'm going to trust you, buddy. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're <laughs> way past their prime. Maybe I should observe them first. I wonder if it'll give me a better chance. See? Your munching and complaining have ruined my concentration. 
The man throws a metal ball towards a smaller wooden ball in the sand, missing it by a meter. Ah, mon dieu. The pain in my back is unbearable. I can't even say if it's in my back or hip anymore. Feels like it's in both. He tries to measure the throw. I hope you pass out from it, you goddamn jellyfish. Men like you are the reason this nation is sinking. <laughs> Standing tall and proud, he looks at his partner with disgust. Trying to throw something as close to a predetermined point as possible. Measuring. This must be the age-old game of Patank. Shush. Ignore them. They don't know what they're doing. They're old. You are letting down yourself and the team. Get in the damn game already. <laughs> I'm on it, coach. He's on the ball, dinky winky. What? No, we went down so low. What? No. Ah. Oh. Screw it. <laughs> this felt wrong. Wrong like touching your sister's breast. You threw your sister's breast. Mon dieu! Good job, officer. That was an excellent throw. Thanks, Gaston. There are no two more harmful words an athlete can hear than good job. And this was downright embarrassing. Why would it feel so wrong? Your muscle memory knew what to do and went for it. But there were gaps. Yeah, gaps you tried to fill with thinking. We don't think in sports. We do. It felt like you were going for a thrust or a lunge. There was definitely gonna be jumping. Maybe you scored a point, but this is a fiasco. Should have just trusted my gut. You just gotta go for these things, you know? I thought something way more spectacular would happen. What are you talking about? You just executed a pretty much perfect petong throw. With a pinch of fear. <laughs> How are you ever going to get the officer's shit off your nose, Gaston? Or even climb out of his ass? <laughs> That's just how Johnny Ball game is. Extraordinary. Right. Was the demonstration it, or do you still need something from us, officer? Yes, officer. What do we need from this gentleman? <laughs> Kitsuragi, please, just be impressed by my sports skills. Do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of the Wellingham Rags? Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. And uh, most of the locals? In Martinez. The union is the law, so can you really blame them? You don't have a problem with the cops? Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. I don't know, you sound French. And if there's one thing I know about the French is that they're no big lover of the cops. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. What about police women? I'm going to trust you for your rhetoric. I'm confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork and other administrative duties. Okay, so this is interesting. Do I... do I... He's clearly a little bit sexist. Right? He's an old sexist French dude. Do I stick with my personal morals and say, you know what, screw you, you're wrong, there are no duties they couldn't do, yada yada. Or do I try to get him on side? I'm like, yeah, fuck them women, <laughs> you know? No, screw it. We must stand by our morals regardless of the situation. There are no duties us young women couldn't carry out. But you must agree that nature, in her infinite wisdom, has made men more fit to perform certain more challenging tasks. Don't you, officer? I do not. Really, officer? <laughs> Match an average woman against an average man in a dark alley and see who comes out on top. Gender equality is a very noble, very modern idea. But in real life, primal roles prevail. But I do not wish to discuss this matter further. I mean, he's not wrong in that if you take the absolute average man and the absolute average woman and put them in a fist fight, the man is going to come out on top the majority of the time, right? But that's not what you're looking for in a police officer anyway. You know, the people who are applying will surely be fitter and stronger than the average person. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it is... <laughs> Accepting that there are differences between men and women, things that women are stronger at, things that men are stronger at, 
doesn't ha it isn't a bad thing, right? That's just biology. It is straight up biology. Um, but that doesn't mean there's any like role that should be limited, unless it's like penis model. <laughs> You know, there are some, but I mean, even then, you're getting into sex versus gender and yada yada yada. You seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Do you know what crater it? I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Oh no. Heavy artillery fire, you say? That's the best kind of artillery fire. <laughs> Very interesting. Man, I did miss the writing of this game. It really does make me happy. Okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Who are the communists again? Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose a name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. <laughs> Did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. He adds a squeezing a boule in his fist. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda. And mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't so, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. It's funny, the, the, there's always this thing with right wing people, wherein they try to posit this sort of uh, left wing, what the left wing would consider utopia. And it's often depictions of women, over sexualized and blue hair and all this kind of stuff. And this man's doing basically the same thing. And he said, suicide sex cults and mad anarchist women. <laughs> like, I'm like full on board, you know? It's like, oh, these terrible things. I'm like, no, 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 that's good. That's good. I've, I've picked the right side here. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. <laughs> I understand. I'd bomb this place too. They should have chosen a place away from people and buildings. My shell here in Martinez. Because this place is a damn beachhead. Had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. He points to the northeast. Deathblow sounds grim. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Patonk. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Hold on, the coalition? Mm hmm. Don't get me wrong, officer. I hate those foreign dogs, but uh, the enemy of my enemy and all that. They're the lesser evil. I know all this, just want to know if you did so now. <laughs> is that why I think it's so bombed out? Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. There's a strange gleam in his eyes. He approves of this radical approach. Knows it was necessary. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Rivachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. <laughs> you know what, I'm really glad I waited to play this game till after the added voice acting, it just wouldn't have been the same. Okay, that's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for the hard working class to take over. Mm. Foreign powers cleaned up our mess and now they rule us. Mm. This coalition seems quite capable. Commies just don't understand how money works. Nothing I don't think I just do. <laughs> oh god. Um. Uh, 
I'm not, the problem is I'm not 100% sure what actually happened. Um, we got attacked by the... Um, this place was run by the communists. Right. And then they got attacked by the coalition in the 80s. Right. And then the union communists, so the, the unionists are the remnants of the, con the communists. And even though it got bombed out, still there? I think. I don't think I just do. No, I don't want to do it. That's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for the hard working class to take over. No. Foreign powers cleaned up. I don't really like any of them. <laughs> the coalition seems quite capable. Who's the coalition? Screw it. They are not. And I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains. I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Fussel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. So the coalition is the foreign power who came in and liberated, inverted commas, Revachal <clears throat> or Martinez from the communists. Instead, all that is just, holy and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. How does Fleet the Third factor into this? It doesn't. That <laughs> was 100 years ago. Ain't got nothing to do with anything. Who is Frissel? Damn Frissel. He was the king we couldn't protect. The carabineers failed him, and the crown. <laughs> he died in the hands of the Hyperlay, in a very public execution. You mentioned Guillaume? A true king in both blood and mind, led Revachal before Frisell. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Some manner of self-deceit is present in his thinking. Sounds like this Guillaume abandoned him. And he doesn't want to admit it. What exactly is a suzerain? The suzerain is the king. Has everyone forgotten already? <sighs> they forgotten already. He's a monarchist. I don't fuck with monarchists. <laughs> it's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. We can give it a go. Let's give it a go. All you observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past and his old uniform. This is not uncommon. There's something else to him, but we just don't know what it is. Yet. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Fissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King Philip the Fifth before him. Don't you mean Fissel the Fan? You do not speak his name, Craven. Although he was a clown. But he was our clown. Ours to ridicule and to mourn. Aww. There's something you missed. You will get to it. Don't worry. It's a white check. We can always come back with more um more composure in the future. I mean I don't know how, can I change my gear mid thing? Maybe I can actually. Maybe I should have done. I don't know if I can. No, I can't. So I'd have to end the conversation. Saw the statue of Philippe the Third near the roundabout. Ah, yes! King Philip the Third on his steed. A reminder of what Revachal once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. He's very hard in on the monarchy at all. Doesn't matter what you do as long as you're tough and you keep the foreigners away, basically. Decisively, 
without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. Alessio is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try- Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. There's some wariness in his voice now. He's heard this rant many times before. The Carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. Right. Well, that's it for now. Thank you. Again, this the voice on this man is incredible. The way he says resolve there is... Whoo! Whoo! <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a button. I don't remember. It's right click. I remember just the button. This shows... Oh, can I talk to the bench? In most games, that would seem like a very weird thing to say. In this game, you just don't know. <laughs> Maybe I can talk to the bench. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. Oh. Thank you, tutorial agent. What's this? It's a ball. Hello, ball. <laughs> Enormous bulls. Where have you a real man? Right. Oh, bottles? <sighs> lovely, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't remember where we trade these in, but I know we can. So, I'm going to make sure we work on that. Um, that is the hotel, and I think the shop is down. That's also the hotel. I think the shop is down here. I love that, thank you. So, these are the unionists. Wait, no. I can't remember the order of this. It's either they're the unionists, or the unionists are the one who've taken over on the inside. Either way, the scabs have come over to take over their job. I think they're probably the unionists. Alright, love, uh, where's this recycle? Is it a recycle thing? What's this? The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. We've got a lot of bottles. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was, you know, 19 bottles just carrying it around. Does that really not make a difference? I feel like if I, <laughs> I feel like if I saw this policeman, I'd just be done, you know? It just, it just wouldn't mean anything. I'd be, I'd be out of there. I said I, okay, there's a few things I want to buy. A colourful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall, inviting you closer. Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. No, I don't want that. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Okay, here. I hope so. I've got three charges of that now, so I, I, I can restore my health and I can restore my uh, morale as need be. Now, um, do you sell the is map? Is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know Who anything. Who sells the map? Oh, maybe it is at the bookshop. Does Frita have a warehouse in the back of the Whirling and Rags? A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe. I don't really care what Frit does. Come on, give me some of the work with here. She looks up from under her brow. Fine. Frit doesn't have a warehouse. Just a little back room here. Okay? Okay. Thanks, love. I don't think she sells it. I think I'm going to go to the bookshop. I, I can picture the shop in my mind's eye. I think it is the bookshop, because I think there's only two shops we've been to. Is that No, there's three. There's the bookshop, there's that shop, and there's a weird, weird little dinky shop as well that I vaguely remember. Is it short? Oh, don't be short. You cheeky little son of a bitch. <laughs> Past nine o'clock, pain happens. Um, I I want a map, because I don't... <laughs> and rather ironically, I want a map to find the shop that I was at last time, because I do not remember where it was. We got a little poke down here. We need to talk to Kuno again anyway. He's still here, chucking rocks at the corpse. Yeah, there he is. Hey, Kuno. Prick. What does Kuno care? <laughs> um, Kuno, I found your shack. Okay, empathy... Jesus. 3% seems like a push. <laughs> Kuno, I found your shack. You know what? So we're here to try, right? He's on your crime scene, bossing you around. 
Andy's been here for some time too. This is where he hangs out. You have to get more out of him. He could be useful. Kuno, you must have seen all kinds of things from Stones here. Want to help the RCM bust a murderer? Fuck no! <laughs> what are you? Fucking mentally handicapped? Kuno, they've almost made you a snitch now. You know what? As I was doing it, I thought he's not going to want to be a snitch. Why am I going for he's this option? Obviously. Kuno always takes the bullet over the hammer. He'd rather die than work with the justice system. Kuno, I found your shack. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? I face shifted that. <laughs> sure. Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. You love it, don't you, Kuno? You can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. He says to himself, then turns to you. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? Uh, What's with the tube of Magnus Solum, Kuno? It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. <laughs> Don't teach him, Kuno! He's going to use it against you, Kuno. I know all about magnesium. I rock it all the time, Kuno. I need to be down with the kids. You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. <laughs> Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're going to OD and you're going to fucking die. What's with the pig head? Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. <laughs> Forget it. I'm a cool pickhead. I liked it. I got one too. This one. What? Eh. Uh, what is this shit? Fucking on yourself. This is weird level shit. Kuno doesn't go there. Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? Got a little well, something there. No one saw that coming. Yeah, we just gotta mess with him. Kuno wants to fuck around. He's gonna find out. Right, I found a plate covered with powder residue. That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. You gotta play. It's like poker. You don't play the game. You play the player, right? Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. No electrochemistry. We're not doing drugs. <laughs> drugs? We're not doing drugs. Go back into the corner. Thank you. Is that my coat up there? I'm pretty sure it's mine. Is it? You got pretty fucked. Kuno surprised you've still got your head after all that. After all what? Don't sweat it, drunk pig. Kuno will keep your nasty secret. Kuno's not snitching. He's saying you climbed up there. He probably saw you do it. That explains the calluses on your hands. You scale the side of the building, entertaining the local kids. Yet, that conclusively explains how the coat got up there. Could I get into the harbour from the roof? Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just got a fly pig. I tried that. It didn't go so well. Kuno knows. Kuno and C saw you shit yourself. It's okay, pig. Not everyone can face the fear Kuno style. That's all there is to it then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. I wonder if that'll help me next time around. You never know. Good call, pig Meister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. I want to discuss the body, Kuno. The fuck about it? Where's the rest of his armor? Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. How come? Kuno's fuck gimp's got one big thing wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. <laughs> I, is this video going to be okay to go online? A mutant? Look at him. Fucking growth hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. Kuno, what have you done oh, with the armor? come on. He's just pretending that he doesn't care because he's too small for the armor. Do I want to tell him that? <laughs> yeah, screw it. Get the fuck out of here trying to fuck on me with that midget shit. Kuno's 12. He's huge. <laughs> what are you? Fucking 80. When Kuno's 80, Kuno can fit four of you in Kuno. Fuck out of here. Trying to fuck on Kuno. Fuck out of here. <laughs> what do you mean you threw it away? Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea. Rugby style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. 
You threw it in the sea? Yeah. That shit means nothing to Kuno. <laughs> Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. <laughs> you wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gate. So much swearing. Jesus Christ. Who do you mean troubadour? Yeah, cocking boot. You know that jolly union cow fucker? Came around <laughs> talking about cows or some shit. Came around pretending like he cares about cows. <laughs> and nobody would care about cows. Fucking cows. Yes, you met him at the gates. The one with the boots and the jolly smile. You mean Manana? Yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. <laughs> Trying to catch a peeper, Kuno's armor. <laughs> Stop talking about the cows, Kuno. Curious, my liege. Why did Kuno feed you this information? You want drama? Let's find out. Yeah, Kuno's doing charity today. Kuno day. Kuno feels sorry for you two loser pigs. Kuno's doing pity now. Still, seems suspicious. He may have it in for that guy. Or you may be paranoid. That is also a possibility, sire. Thank you, drama. You're very respectful. There are contusions all over his body. Did you do that? What fuck are you talking about? What is this contusion shit? He says you're stupid, Kuno. They want to make you stupid again. <laughs> contusion is a bruise. I'm talking about the marks of stones left on the corpse. Oh, did Kuno make your shit sniffing harder? Obstruction of shit sniffing? This is Kuno's kingdom. Kuno fucking rules here. Hmm. You hear the lieutenant hum. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f I have more questions about the crime scene. Yeah. The kingdom of Kuno. The fuck do you want with it? <laughs> the dead man's clothes were in the trash container. How did they get that? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. He needs to know Kuno. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price. 500 real. Seems like a bargain, Kuno. You'd have to be blind not to notice the giant white letters F-A-L-N running down his trouser leg. Uh, What happened to his clothes? Look, Kuno ain't seen shit lying around. Except for that f*** up there. Now you want performance gear or not, Grandpa? The lieutenant remains silent, but his expression couldn't say, I told you so, any louder. Kitsuragi, just let me do my thing. Entertain me. What's so great about these pants? Pig, these are foul modulars. Liquid fit, performance crotch, urban survival shit. Made in Mirova by scientists. Pants, scientists. Believe it, you need this shit. He unzips his jacket to give you a quick peek at the plastic wrapped pants. They are graphite black and look brand new. These could drastically improve your chances of survival in the urban wilderness. Coach Physical Instrument endorses these pants. They are tartan ready. They will also make you into an idiot. <laughs> but I don't have 500 real. I might be interested. Let's talk about it later. All right, Piggo. Shit's rolling. Don't do business with the pig, Kuno. He's gonna steal all your money, Kuno! As you can see, Kuno and C don't trust ya. Can't do business without trust. Alright. There's more to his distrust than being a pig. He feels threatened by something obscure in you. What that is, however, remains a puzzle for now. Ask Garth if he knows how the victim's clothes are in the trash. Go to Harbourgate, ask Mess, and buy the pants, eventually. There's also a mug. The fuck? A mug in the trash. Is this about the fucking clothes again? <laughs> the racist mug. I remember the racist mug. Um, yes, does this racist mug have anything to do with it? Yeah, Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you pigs are after the mug fucker because he's the clothes fucker? I can't hear you, Kuno. Speak louder, Kuno. That's exactly what I'm saying, Kuno. Someone's tampered with the crime scene, cleaned some of it up. Shit, that's tense. Someone's going to the beat-down basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. He nods in approval. Kuno's getting into it a little bit. We need to stoke this fire. The kid may have something there. He's already come up with an interrogation technique, too. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there. And if he did, he wouldn't squeal. 
But if you find out, maybe you can... Tell the Kuno who it was. He's curious. He likes putting two and two together here. Stop turning into a pig, Kuno! They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching! Get away from my Kuno f Yeah? Get your bacon shit away! Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo! Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face! The ladder, have a climber? Look at that <clears throat> fucking shit! You're trying to get Kuno killed! <laughs> we just said the ladder is unclimbable. Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat! <laughs> The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. Kitaragi, what are you writing? It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! What's in the greenhouse? Dunno. Kip das gardener used to work there. Kipped is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Oppergeit descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Oppergeits of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. They used to work there? Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. Shit, nothing to Kuno. <laughs> you mean a young woman by the whirling of rags that got no? Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. <laughs> he looks you in the eye and nods as if agreeing for himself. Yeah, her. What was she doing in the greenhouse in March anyway? What kind of gardening is done in March? Accept the task. Yes, it seems suspicious. You don't like things being like that. Suspicious. I hate suspicion. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. The fuck do you want with it? Good call, Pigmeister. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Thanks, Kuno. Okay, see you later, Kuno. What's what do you see? Hmm. Okay. Uh, right. Well, let's go... God, it's nearly 10 o'clock. I'm gonna go try to talk to the guy at the front. Oh, this is the gardener, isn't it? Hello again, officer. How are things? The young woman in the wheelbarrow at the corner has told you to take a break from gardening because I took a spell, but what if she's lying after all? What kind of gardening is done in March? Tell me, what exactly have you been doing in your greenhouse in March? She seemed lovely. Well, uh... This might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. She smiles shyly. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. <laughs> Disingenuous grandpa. This is a red check, it cannot be retried. 72% though. All you can see oh, come is the on, fact game. that skin is a different colour from yours. That's literally all. You're gonna have to run with that. Mm. What does that mean? <laughs> You're black. Oh, come on. <laughs> what kind of music do you listen to? I don't know. Whatever's on the radio, I guess. What does this have to do with snow or gardening in March? Okay. 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 Ah. Uh, snow has. Yes. Think about the cute grandma. Not the weird snow. <sighs> really annoyed I didn't get that. 72%. Grandma's a bit too much. A bit much? What are you talking about? That's what my grandma told me, okay? She feels interrogated now. It's hard to say if she's lying. Relax, miss. This is not an interrogation. We are just checking some facts. What nutrients? Nitrogen and sulfur mostly. And whatever factories and aerostatics exhale too, I guess. Mm hmm. Um. Did it, I guess. I'm a little disappointed. It didn't work out more than that, but. This one is. Do I not have XP yet? No, 90. Investigate the body. It shouldn't be long until we get it down. Oh. Okay. Five more? Thanks for keeping me in the know, sir. No worries, love. Alright, I shouldn't say love, I feel that some people find it derogatory, it's just, I'm just northern, I don't want to tell you. Alright, who is the smiley? You're not the smiley, you're the big scary man, right? Right to work! Right to work! <laughs> Shame on you! You don't have any tips on how to punch a guy out, do you? Say a really big race theorist guarding a button. Not before you get in there and get your ass whooped. 
Learn by failure, I always say. He might have some advice, but you've got to at least try to fight Measurehead first. Return if you fail. Is it this guy? It's definitely someone in the area. Hold on, wondering man. It How is. Kuno told me you were supposed to know about the armor. <laughs> the little boy had a good on his promise. His promise? To get me into trouble. To sick the pigs on me. Pardon the choice of words. Not mine. What happened? I was asked to look into that armor situation. Official union probe, you know. Track it down, see who took it. Did you? At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know. So I went to this boy. He said he'll make me his prison bitch. He's got eyes everywhere, and the cops in his pocket, and he's the king of Jamrock. Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me into trouble. One bad move is all it takes. What did you learn, buddy? I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor. What else? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That was the interesting part. What sort of technical stuff? I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. How does it come off? In parts. Four in total. The helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots were still on the guy last I saw. Too hard to remove. So, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. Hold up, four pieces. Helmet, cuirass, gauntlets, boots, what about the leggings? Oh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. Forget about them. I did. That's very suspicious. <laughs> I'm gonna find all of the pieces. All of it? There are junior officers out there, eager to prove themselves. I would leave some for them, and I would leave the boots to processing, but okay. Let's find all of it. All of it! It's implied. He finds it unlikely that you will succeed in this. Ye of little faith, Kisaragi. A meskis epic then, all across Martinez. I hope it will be a real bonanza for you. Thank you. I love a bonanza. This might take a while, like a long while. Uh, Kuno uses a skate. It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. He thinks, not yet. Better to get this business out of the way. Sweeter then. No problem. If you see that kid, thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. Am I gonna go punch the guy? It seems like a bad idea. I need to get into the bloody thing though, but I need to. If I can make the jump, then. Oh, hello. Kids Raggy wants to talk to me. We should maybe think about telling it to yeah. maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for damages yet. You should yet. take care of that then. Let's money. talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. We're gonna get more money tomorrow, right? I don't remember. I've got some money. Let's go negotiate. Isn't the cafeteria manager Gart? I need to talk to Gart out of way. It hasn't taken me long to kind of... Yeah, I'm back into it now. I, I don't remember absolutely everything I was doing, but I, I'll, I'll get there. Oh. Got my bag, got my hat. That's the elderly lass. Talk to everyone here, if I remember correctly. Got in his bird. Can I help you? It's about that money I owe. Yes, have you got it? I was wondering if we come to some sort of. A, how much? A room? lot. Oh, God. A lot, lot. For the room, drinks, and broken window, 130 real. When are going to come to some sort of arrangement? Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? Kim is about to say something, let him. That sounds like a better idea. <laughs> I understand your predicament as the manager. However, I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking, and I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. Hold on, I still have my key, you know. Good luck trying to use it. Oh. All the locks have an electronic component. They have to be unlocked down here with a master key before your 
guest key will open the lock. Confident. I'm not going to break the door down. Not until you bring me the money. Okay. I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. I'm sorry, oh, Lieutenant. We're done here. No, we're not. I saw another thing. Another thing. Great. I... Yes? I didn't see anything. Didn't I have to ask Gart about something? Am I crazy? Ah, oh, this has so many tasks. <laughs> it just keeps going up and up and up. <laughs> Alright, come on then. Gets. Back out we go. At least I'm not paying, you know? <laughs> it's a benefit for me. That's the car, right? Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. The silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. What are those things? They are spinner hubcaps, frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. What do you mean you confiscated them? A couple of weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. Turns out he was some coalition official son and high. So you took his spinners? Mm -hmm. I took them and arrested him for driving under the influence. And I confiscated them as well. No worries. That they are. I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. Kitsuragi is uh, playing the system a little bit here. Did you want to put them on your machine? No, no, that, that would be silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I couldn't put them on this MC anyway. A cup with spinners. That would be outrageous. Outrageously cool, Kitsuragi. He flashes a smile, barely visible in the dark. All right, Kitsuragi's a cool kid. <laughs> I'm sorry you have to sell them because of me. As I said, they're useless anyway. I should have remembered I have these earlier. Let's take them. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. Oh, he's a good egg, isn't he? It's a good egg. Uh, right, the pawn shop is down here to the south. Maybe? I'll find out. It exists. That's all I need to know. I like a bit here. Hot air rises up from the sewer. Sour, acidic, and strangely comforting. Oh, maybe you got bottles for me. Oh, yeah. That's point two of a real way, though. Rolling in the dough, or rolling in it. Is this the pawn shop? No, I think so. It is! Uh, right, let's have a little look around. What a shirt. All other shirts pale in comparison to the muscular man with antlers and immense it. Zweihanders. Welcome to Hyundal, officer. Thanks. I wanted the man from Nyamdal. <laughs> Typical Martinez streetlight sits among the street light assorted. I got this t-shirt in case we need like a physical instrument challenge, you know what I mean? You see rows of toy soldiers guarding Ooh. the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, right, interfacing. others in rags, others yet. Let me see if I've got anything that boosts my interfacing in my clothes. Endurance, conceptualization, conceptualization, suggestion. No. Whoa, they're worth a fortune. What was it I was trying to do? None of those, anyway. Um, I feel bad. <laughs> Kitsuragi's supported me selling his stuff, and then I instantly the go buy his stupid t shirt. On the shelves. <laughs> and your boombox, that gold and amber. I do want that, but not yet. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Something I'd like to sell. Yes, we'd like to sell these hubcaps. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? 
jump a misc banger? No matter. I'll give you 200 rael. No one was defrauded or jumped. I assure you. The lieutenant explains as the pawnbroker opens the register and counts of the Of course. Cash. I meant no offense. 200 rael for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. Thank you. Here's the 130 rael you need for your bill. Do not waste it. <laughs> the rest is for him. To compensate for the pain of being separated from his radiant spinners. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Well, now that I've got all this money... <laughs> Another time, perhaps. Sure thing. Sure, man. Okay, right. Well, the kid's Rocky's a good egg, to say the least. I wish I didn't have to make him sell that. Maybe I didn't. Maybe there was a better way, but I don't know what it was. Um, right, so, we will go talk to Gart again, and wake up, it'll be a beautiful new day, there are things happening tomorrow, we're gonna run the number tomorrow, for example, and uh, that sounds like something for the next video, so thank you very much for joining me, I will see you lovely folks very soon, cheers much as always, bye bye.